The Death of the Queen, Nigeria, Past and Future. I think it is fitting that on the occasion of the death of the Queen of the Empire, which brought Nigeria together as a nation, we are discussing these issues. There is no doubt in my mind that the problems that we experienced within the first 10 years of independence were no accident. They were foreseeable and the British themselves made such efforts as they could within the constraints of their national interest to mitigate against them. Unfortunately, the firewalls they built against conflict proved insufficient and we ended up thereafter with a long period of military rule with all its perversions. We have ended up with a democracy and a constitution taking the color of and dictated by the military. The worst aspect of this is that although the British, because of our diversity, tried to create at independence a federal state, we have ended up with long years of military rule, now with a pseudo unitary government, where states, instead of competing to produce, go to Abuja with a begging bowl in, co in competition. Our politics has become so poisoned and parochial that we find ourselves at the stage in this election where the parties and their policies will be more or less the same whoever wins. Removal of subsidy, privatization of all utilities and public assets, increasing privatization of education and neglect of the urgent need for restructuring of the federation. It's these issues more than any particular candidate or political party that Nigerians should be focused on whoever becomes president after this election. We are talking about intellectualism, politics and policies, and I was talking about we should be responsible and stop blaming colonialism. I mean, colonialism has its up and down. They brought Western civilization, which is good. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are other bad aspects of it. Fine. But these things, that was the era at that time. If the British had not colonized us, another person or another uh, people set of empires would do that. Or perhaps who would, do that? who would have done that to ourselves? I mean, some of our kings, Asian kings, were brutal to other neighboring kingdoms in this same country. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in this same nation, then, because then we were not even a country then, we were different nations. Mm -hmm. And then, from the queen's father to the queen herself, Queen Elizabeth II, there are a lot of independence, independence. Nigerian gained independence, became a republic. What have we done with it? So let's stop blaming this people. These guys have done their part. The British have done their good parts and they've gone. Let's focus on ourselves. What next for us? You talk about intellectualism. Here we are again. What next for us? You talk about people going back to Abuja to beg. Oh, every governor is going to Abuja to beg for what you call it, a gunje in local parlance. Mm -hmm. Whereas we could develop our homegrown local resources to solve global problems. What are we doing about the natural resources in this country? Oil is still here. Even though they cry that as some people cry for, oh, ability took a lot from us, but oil is here, cocoa is here, granite is here, coal is here. Name them, what have we done with it? So let's stop crying foul, let's take responsibility. <laughs> I think I'll just, you know, accentuate what Elijah has said. It's super important for us to understand that, you know, we must come to a point where we take responsibility for our nation. You know, I was listening to one of my you know old teachings i was talking to a group of people and i said that when i was born into my current family nobody took my permission nobody even asked me my parents didn't say oh please you want to come to this family you know or would you want to go to this school or whatever so when i grew up there are some certain decisions i must make by myself such as the kind of career i wanted to pursue you know, such as the kind of person I was going to marry, you know, and things like that. So those decisions, I, you know, when they say, um, I don't know who said that particularly, but I used to read in the book, if you were born poor, right, no issues. If you remain and die poor, it's your fault. Which is, you know, whatever they handed down to us, we need to move away from that and begin to rethink a paradigm shift. How do we change how do we get more responsible and then change things? You know, we have Nigeria, it's what we have now. What are we doing with it? So, okay, maybe I, I should first go back to what Suleiman said, that um, 
change, we will build Nigeria from the bottom down. But tell me, which country from the bottom down? Said bottom, bottom up. Bottom up. Oh, okay. Bottom up. Yeah. But tell me, which country in history has been built from the bottom up? Yeah, I can't, it I can't disagree not, with that. It, it has never happened before. It's, it's, it's leadership. Hard. So for for sh for I I take I, I believe what Chinua Achebe said in 1983. Our problem is squarely and simply that of leadership. Now, um, with, I'm going back now. I'm just treating what we have said before. So let me quickly go to the incident of Dubai, the cultists, and all that, and all that. It, thank God Suleiman also mentioned that, just as we were dealing with that, we are dealing with the issue of the Nigerian breaking records all over the place. Every competition, every competition she was just breaking records. Now, Chino Achebe used to say that if you look in the compound of a man who is going to be great, you see mad people, you see stupid people, you see crazy people, you see great people, you, every person of every color. So the Dubai people, they are us. The, the woman, she's us. We have great scientists too. We are going to get there. It's just that it's going to take time. All these people are us. We should accept them. They are us. They are us in the process. If you look at any other country, in their past history, America like that. You see all, all manners of corruption. It happens everywhere. All of them are us. We are going, what it shows to me is that we are going to be a great, a great nation. But it's going to take some time. Understand, in 19, uh, uh, our first motion for independence was 1953. It took seven years of argument with the British and all that. That showed there was a problem, a, a coming problem. 53 to first motion to 1960. So many constitutional developments. There were many times they went to conferences. There were many times they went to England and all that. But look at her history. In 1963, a major politician was found guilty of treason. Those were not yeah, I will love it. those were not auspicious things. So we are going to get there. This is the way history moves. It's going to take us time to blend into one nation. We would blame colonialism, but we shouldn't sit there. We should move forward. But even as we move forward, we recognize it will take time. Every country's history is unique. Not every country had oil after 10 years of independence. We had oil 10 years after independence, and that scattered our head. It's, 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 it's just... Oil boom. <laughs> and the oil boom. And we couldn't even tap into yeah. the jeans of the Russian Ukraine. Yeah. To yeah. sell gas and make money. We are still in... I mean, we are still emerging from the confusion of military rule. You see? <laughs> gradually, <laughs> gra gradually, gradually, we will get there. Maybe, maybe if we had not had oil, we would have even moved faster. Because you remember in the 60s, we were exporting things like cotton, granite, we were exporting palm oil. Maybe oil even confused us. So is oil a cotton or a blessing? It looks like a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was the the time. Let's engage um, <laughs> Sulevan. <Yeah. Okay. laughs> what is he has to say about this? <laughs> Hi, Suleiman. Are you there? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear? Can you hear? Great, great. Well, what's your thoughts around this? Um, it's actually it's a, a kind of mix uh, one for me, right from, just as I would say, the success stories are there, and the one that makes all of us sad is also uh, there. So all oh, just as a um, one, um, said earlier, one thing we must find out is that we must find that collective effort in nation building. That is, you do your part, I do my part. That persons that sells in the market do their part, the civil servant do their part, the artisans do their part, each and every one of us do our part. I quite get it. I'm not running from the fact that nation building, the box, most of the box ends on the desk of uh, leaders. That is, when you get the leadership right, every other thing falls into places. That is very, 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 very correct. But at the same time, it has to be a kind of symbiotic. That is, you do a part, the leaders do their part, the followers also do their part. So that's my take. All right. So you can wrap up the time. I can handle. Yeah. Okay, so my take is this, that, uh, well, there's a place for blaming colonialism, but um, I see a great future in Nigeria. All the problems that we see today, I, I see that they are teaching problems, problems of pioneers. We have a long history in front of us. I, I, I think all 
what the problem tells us is that this is going to be a great nation, but it will take time. It, it will take time. We should be patient. I don't think we should be unhopeful. There's ground for hope. We, and I don't think the story is, uh, there's a single narrative here. As you see lack of progress, you see progress too, and all that. Like uh, Christopher Okigbo said, in our wars that fail, you find our wars that succeed too. Yes, Suleiman Akonde will be talking about nation building after the break. <laughs>